Hello, Ian here from Dark Place Workshop. Welcome back to another video. Uh, this one we're doing the Acromantulas from Harry Potter. Righto, so for the spiders I've picked out these colours. Um, it's a classic um, Citadel paint uh, combination where you start off with that as the base layer and highlight. But what I'm going to do is start off with the 50-50 mix of these two and then add in Bane Blade Brown as we go on. And maybe a bit of bone towards the end or ivory just to lighten that up if we need it. So we're going to start off with the Acromantula. And I've got my 50-50 mix ready in a palette. I just wanted to talk about the brush that I'm going to use. You can get these off eBay. Um, they're like a 25-piece uh, makeup brush set. Um, it is, I think it worked out about four or five pounds for about 25 brushes. All different sizes and shapes. But they're brilliant for dry brushing. I save you buying uh, like an eight quid brush from Games Workshop to do your dry brushing with. Just got a, a bag full of these and I'll last you even longer. So let's get started on this guy. So let's dip my brush in the paint. And then you probably know how to dry brush. You get rid of the excess on a paper towel. And then just start applying it. To the spider. Uh, so you want to go across the contours. What I mean by that is the raised areas, if if they're all in a line like that, it's easier to apply the paint that way than it is that way. I'm not going to put too much on the body because I'm going to lighten that with a, a metallic colour just to make it stand out. So we got pretty good coverage on there from the first coat. So we'll leave that to dry. Um, and you can do these for the, the little swarm guys as well while you're at it. Um, these are ones that are primed, but I, I did a splash of um, uh, white primer from, from above as well, but I'll, I'll just Add another coat just to darken it down so it's the same as the, the, the larger version. So same again, just stroke across the way. So the next layer is a 50-50 mix of the, the Gawthor Brown and the Bane Blade Brown. And same again, just dry brush it on. You probably guess this is a really quick and easy paint job. Make sure you get the eyes there. And I've done the same for the swarm as well. With the these ones are concentrated on the the tops of the legs, you know, where they bend. And just a little bit on the, the abdomen not the abdomen. I, I don't know what else that bit's called. The bulbous bit. And then we're ready to move on to the next stage. So for the next stage I've gone with the Bane Blade Brown but I've added a couple of drops of ivory to it and I'm going to swap brushes now to a smaller one. Um, just to give you an idea, that was the one we were using previously. And now I've gone down to well, about half the size there. And I've chosen this one because I can get in there between the legs to, to catch the top of the head. So um, I'm just going to apply, well I'm just going to dip it in the paint now, get rid of the excess. And I'm going to concentrate on the, on the knuckles. And then the 
head. Still not worried about being neat yet. That's that one ready. And do the same with the little guys as well. Again, this brush can fit in between where the legs are as well, so you can catch the, the top of the head. And then on the bendy bits of the legs. So the next stage is Mournfang Brown and I'm just doing this for the the, uh, the earth that's around the spiders. Uh, there's a couple of stones in there as well which we'll come to in a little bit. Luckily there's, there's not much earth to paint in the middle of the paces all around the outside, thankfully. to the big guy. Got a bit more earth to do on this one. Sorry, that was the wrong one. That's the one. Um, I've got a gap between the base and the the start of the, the acromantula base. So I'm planning to use a bit of filler um, just to make it smoother. Uh, we'll come to that later as well. I should have done it before I primed, but uh, I was in a rush. So ideally you want to trim down these acromantula bases, put them on... You can leave them on the bases that they're on, you know, they, as long as they're flat. But, uh, I wanted them to have the same rim as the, the main miniatures, so that's why I've put them on these bases. Uh, obviously I'll need to get rid of that step. I'll show you what I've done on one that I've painted already. On this one there's quite a few stones to pick out as well. Show you the one I've done already. It's a test piece. As you can see I've, I've smoothed it out with a bit of filler and it's, uh, it's a nice smooth edge to it. Looks a lot better. Okay, right, so I'll wait for that Mornfang to dry uh, while I do the rest of the the other eight or so uh, swarms, so I'll come back when I've done all these as well. So carrying on with the Agrax, now I'm going to apply it to the whole base now, so that's the earth. Um, particular attention between the, the body and the legs, and in between the legs. So it's more or less everything apart from the top of the body, but it doesn't really matter if you get any on the top. Oops. 
a nice decent amount so it does pool Just on the face because we can pick it out the eyes afterwards and then on to the big man between the legs it's going to leave the top bit but we'll do the underside and then we'll leave that to dry So you probably noticed that I've done the, the black around the base as well now. But uh, Agrax is nice and dry now. What I need to do is I'm going to put a, a little bit of black and brown around where the eyes are. I'm just using dryad bark. Oh, little mistake there. And um, a little bit of black in it. So, a tiny bit of dried bark, tiny bit of black, a uh, bit of water as well. And just apply that to where the eyes are. I want to do that because when I pick out the eyes in ivory, they're going to stick out even more. So, uh, they'll be be more definition around them so the same on these little guys as well so just a strip across where the eyes are because if I did just um, if I, I'm going to be using ivory if I just put two little dots of ivory there because the surrounding color is just a, like a light brown it's not going to stand out as much so darken the area first And then when you apply the ivory, it'll be really bright. And then what we'll do, we'll put a little bit of red ink on it to um, make them like a glowing red colour. So now I'm going to use ivory to dot the eyes. He says very carefully. I'll try and make them bigger off camera, but um, we're on the right track there. I'll swap over to the, the big guy now, or the bigger guy. These can be slightly bigger as well. Let's notice I'm supporting. My fingers on on these fingers so I've got a good uh, solid base to move the brush on not too bad right crack on with the rest of them and we'll come back for the next stage 
So just to finish um, off the eyes, I've got some uh, Blood for the Blood God. It's for a bit of fun. And uh, let's apply that. Over the white. See, I'm really spooky. A bit too much on my brush, aren't I? Do the same for the little ones. It's up to you what uh, colours you want to use. Could you use the yellow eyes or I could do black with a white spot on it for a reflection. I think that's up to you. Right, we're going with the red. So, what's left to do now is the stone work. So we'll uh, we'll swap to some. Let's have a look. Uh, dark blue grey next. Okay, so we're just going to apply this to all the stony parts of the of the base. There's quite a bit on the the larger one. Not so much on the little guys. Um, it's just a basic base coat. Nothing special to see, so we'll stop it there. And I'll carry on around the base. So next up I'm going to dry brush the rocks with, um, I think it's a light grey. Just mix with white, just to lighten it up. So we're looking at something like administratum grey. That kind of uh, light grey anyway. Just highlight the edges of the rocks. It's just the same again for the, the little guys, the main bits of rock around the, f the front of the base actually, so it's not that much around that you can get at anyway. <laughs> And if you want to, add a little bit more white to it, just to give it an extra little punch. Um, it's not really needed on the little ones, but it should give a nice effect on the, the larger base. Just to help define where the spider actually is, instead of it all being the same kind of colour. So just to say that that is perfectly good now for you know gaming standards. If I redid the the border in black, and uh, I think we're done there. If you wanted to go a little bit further, stick with me, and we'll go on to the final touches. Okay, to take mine a bit further, I've done some mixing. I've got uh, Runefang steel, a little bit of Nagaroth nightshade in it. 
and whatever the purple wash was, I couldn't, uh, I can't remember what that one is. Uh, and then I added a little bit of chrome to it just to bring the silver back because I was running out of rune fang basically. But it can basically just use rune fang with a tiny bit of purple and a bit of water. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply that to the the main body. Not not this part here where the, the head is, but this part here. And originally on my first batch, I just did the top half and there's a line that separates them. But I've decided to do the whole I don't think it looks a lot better than just a boring brown spider. You know. A little bit of magic in there. And then for the there's little bits that separate the the sections of the legs, so I'm gonna highlight that as well with the same colour. So it's just basically I'll just work my way around and do all the all eight legs. Oh, I can't control it. I've got a little bit of shake in the thumb here. Whether it's at an awkward angle or not, I don't know. Um, it's a lot easier just to hold it in, uh, and just rest it and hold um, hold it there. But what I'll do, I'll put another similar line. On the bottom section of the legs as well. So it just continues the theme down the leg. So we'll come back for the next stage. So there we are with the legs done now. So I've made a, a mix of um, purple wash and a little bit of black in it. So it's about four parts purple to two parts black. And we're just going to apply that to the metallic part. Try and pull it in the, the grooves. And then just go around the legs as well. Could do two or two or three coats just to get it nice and purple on the legs at least. I think um, might get away with just the one coat on the the main body. So it's the same drill for the little fellas. The ones that you can see anyway. There is another one under there, but it's just as easy just to leave it. So I'll just leave those two dry. Okay, so we're all at the same stage on these ones now. The next bit is to add some static grass. So I've got some PVA on a bit of card, uh, just to save time really. And um, a couple of shades of static grass. And what we're gonna do is get an old brush. Dip in the PVA for a blob on the base here and there. Mm. Let's 
Let's make a plot a bit bigger. So let's drop the um, brush out of the way. Got the static grass and got a pair of tweezers. Grab a clump of static grass, tap off the excess, and you'll see you've got strands sticking down the way. Put that directly into the PVA. And if you've got any excess, just tap it away. And we'll do the same on that bit. I'm keeping the base over the the container of static grass because all the the excess will just drop straight back into the pot. And work my way around the base. And if you can see what I'm doing, so just grabbing a clump, tap away the excess. Stick it into the glue. So once you've done all the bobs, turn over, tap off the excess, and then pull it to one side and just blow off. Any random strands, and you're left with that. And you might want to retouch the the edge of the base in black again, but um, he's done. So I'm going to continue with the rest now. I'll we'll come back when we're finished. And there we are, finished on the bases. Um, quite enjoyable little project. This once you get going. Um, I like the, the static grass uh, added to the bases because it makes it, uh, it well, it ties everything together, doesn't it? It, uh, it looks a lot better that way. Um, I was just having a look at the, it's like the second edition stuff that came with the, the Chamber of Secrets box set. And um, they're a lot chunkier than the, uh, the original releases, but there's more on the base. So... Um, I'm gonna do these. Uh, I won't be doing a tutorial for these because it's exactly the same techniques that I'm using anyway. But it'd be interesting to see how they uh, they stack up against these uh, these guys we've done here. So um, yeah, uh, what what I would suggest is if you have um, a couple of sets, like uh, this this is two sets here. Um, you've got five. Uh, five bases that are actually counted as a swarm and what you can do is have uh, you know, the same color for five and then a different color for another five but what i'd suggest if you were following this technique is to use you know, instead of purple and silver i'd stick to a you know a saturated um darker color you know on the on the color wheel so you're looking at blues and greens um yellow definitely won't work um, I think orange uh, is a bit, um, it's a bit of a weak colour, so I wouldn't bother with red either. So I just stick to purple, uh, blue, and green, and that should have enough colours there to, you know, get a, a f quite a few swarms uh, in your game. Then, so right, so that's it. Um, yeah, all finished. So. Any questions? Get in touch in the in the comments below, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.